seat. You're in the hot seat. Yes, I am, and it's always a pleasure. That the hot seat is. It is actually always quite calling hot seat me, here, isn't it? <laughs> For some reason, it's always calling yeah, me. But uh, it's great to see you, Jenny, and uh, the fabulous theater lab um, ladies. It's just uh, an amazing space that Orietta has put together, and uh, it's been a pleasure of mine as as well as for the salon to collaborate with with her and uh, her space. So uh, it's great to have a presentation tonight. And it is my pleasure to introduce one of our first salon members from way back when. Uh, uh, we were founded in 2008. Um, and uh, Kelly Donovan is a magnificent dancer, choreographer, and teacher. And it's great to have you back here in New York City, Kelly. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be back here. It's, it's amazing um, to see you again. And I uh, can't wait to see what you're going to be putting together here in New York um, this fall. And Kelly splits her time between Boston and New York City. And she teaches in both cities and has performed work by Ann Carlson and Liz Thurman. She currently teaches modern dance at UMass Boston and received her training in choreography from Mark Morris and Bessie Schomburg. She has shown work in Boston and at the Cuddyhun Studio, Joyce Soho Movement Research for Rover in the 92nd Street Y in New York City. This fall, as I alluded, uh, she will be producing a monthly dance series in Manhattan. And uh, you can follow her and uh, her great uh, dancers at kddcompany.wordpress.com. And uh, so Kelly, gosh. Uh, you know, I, I, I have seen your work personally, and I've seen you engaging with, with other artists, and, uh, and how you bring people together is, is quite inspiring, and, and the pieces that you do um, are very uh, uh, engaging. I mean, they're really just, I mean, dance is full of movement, of course, but there's just something about the spirit that you, that you bring to your pieces. Uh, thank you. So congratulations. And so tell us um, a little bit first how you a dancer. I'm sure there's people out there who says, I'm a dancer, I think. <laughs> you know, what, what, can you tell us a little bit about your story that might help inspire others yeah, that sure. want to follow your path? Um, actually, I, I went to see musicals when I was 11. My aunt took me, and I just told my mom, I want to do that. And she just got me enrolled in dance right away because she said that took the longest to learn. So, so I did that first, and I kind of stuck. And I did a little bit of theater and music, but the dance was more interesting to me. And when I first saw modern dance, um, a theater teacher took us on a field trip, and I just looked at it and knew that's what I want to do. Just it was just one of those moments where you just know, and um, and so I just pursued that in you know in college and and uh, and now in, in first in Boston and now here in New York. That's great. And uh, do you consider yourself uh, strictly or mostly a modern dance? Um, yeah, creator and performer. Yeah. Do, you, do you have elements of other? forms and genres of dance that not not much I mean mostly modern I'm really intrigued by Bouteau which is the Japanese style of modern dance um, that really inspires me a lot um, but yeah I would say modern dance mostly I did a lot of musicals and things when I was younger but in children's theater but you know, I really always come back to modern dance um, and I like the collaborative aspect of it that's great. What what is that about? Uh, you know, the collaborative aspect. What what grabs you with that? Well, I you know I feel like uh, like the dancers I'm working with now, and typically at first, you know, when I was younger, I would try to teach movement and say do it like this, and it just never really kind of gelled until I started to draw from the experience of the dancers themselves and started to work with them, helping me to create the material. And then I felt like you know it was it became their expression and that process of the choreographer handing the work over to the dancers. It wasn't this uh, awkward thing, but it suddenly it was theirs even before that happened because they had helped to create it. Which is definitely over the years I've tried to refine that process and continue to to really build the piece around them and their strengths and their expression. That's magnificent. And uh, have you heard of any? feedback from your dancers around that and, and uh, what that's given them as, as dancers and moving their careers forward? Yeah, I mean, I think in, for the ones who like working that way, I think it helps them build their choreographic voice and then quite often they go on to dance. Um, our company is called Kelly Donovan Dancers and the first year I came to New York, they sort of didn't want to tell me right away, but they had started their own group and called it And Dancers. And so we actually ended up 
performing half the Joy Soho show was they opened the evening and then the second half was the piece we had built together. So they didn't, they kind of kept it a secret and they didn't really, they were afraid I'd be upset or something. I don't know why, but I was thrilled that they, that something I had come here and started continued on afterwards. So I think it helps them develop their choreographic voice because they literally create and help to create the movement that we do. That's wonderful. I imagine uh, some of them had probably never thought that they would be uh, choreographers. Yeah, right? you know, I think it's something too with when dancers come to New York, there are not always a million opportunities to perform. And like in Boston, when I first got there, mm -hmm. there were hardly any dance companies to really audition for. It's a very small community. Um, so I started choreographing there because I wanted to dance. And then it just kind of became the main thing that became important to me. And I think that happens for dancers here sometimes too. Yeah, and I see that really uh, kind of developing uh, across the disciplines of, of all the various art disciplines. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that artists are, are creating their own exhibitions, their, their own events, yeah. their own shows. Yeah, it's exciting. So in dance as well, it's, it's amazing. Have there been any particular women creatives uh, that have inspired you, historical or contemporary? Um, I think one of the things that I have been doing in the last few years, I was back in Boston for two years, and um, I, was, I performed in a piece with Liz Lehrman at Northeastern University a number of years ago called Still Crossing, which I think she premiered here in New York. Um, and mixing the generations of dancers, we did a project at the Boston Center for the Arts a couple of years ago with dancers ages 9 through, I think, 79. So it was a really cool, fun, collaborative project and definitely something I want to return to. Um, the venue that we're performing in in January, they have a residency and I was speaking with them about the possibility of doing something like that and they were really enthusiastic about it. So they have a, a senior center nearby and they would like to engage the seniors and then they also have kids programs. So they're, everybody's sort of built right in to, to jump in hopefully and do something together. That's great and, and to have a cross-generational yeah. engagement and interaction must be a very uh, re-inspiring and, and, you know, giving back and, and uh, as well as across the, the different generations, they probably feed each other and oh, yeah, learn definitely. from each other. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, this fall, what you're, you know, how you're hoping to see it come together? Sure. Um, I just had auditions last weekend and found about 15 or so really uh, stunning dancers and that's what I love about coming to New York because there's so many great dancers here. Um, and I'm working on a piece called The Body Becomes the Messenger and ironically that was a phrase that was given to me, um, I had an astrology reading last spring and she said this is what's happening in your life, the body is becoming the messenger and it really is true because I just turned 49 and my body is telling me a lot of things that I'm not really <laughs> loving right now but it's okay. You hear you. Um, <laughs> But um, just mostly, you know, really having to take better care of myself and really think about, um, and the feedback loop with that gets shorter and shorter as it gets you get older. So, um, you know, thinking about that, you know, in a literal way, but also the idea that, you know, in movement and choreography, that's a self-expression, the body is the messenger. So kind of looking at that on a different bunch of different levels, and on the first day, I, I sat around and kind of brainstormed with the dancers, what does this mean to you? And it was interesting because they had all kinds of different ideas. and. And uh, you know, I'm not really sure what direction it will take, um, but that's what's exciting about collaborating with other artists is that you know they, what they're bringing to it becomes part of what it, what how it ends up. So uh, yeah, that's exciting it, indeed. And and, and uh, our 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 ten minutes is always too too short on uh, Salon Radio. I know it doesn't. Um, and uh, how can people get in touch with you? Um, you mentioned your website earlier. Sure. So KDD, KDD Company .wordpress com, and there's contact sites. There's also a link to the Third Life Choreographer series, which is something I started in um, Boston, and I hope to get off the ground here. Just looking for space. We can. Maybe I need to talk to you guys. Um, so, um, so, uh, and there's all kinds of other information about everything, as well as links to video. You can kind of see our process week by week as we build the piece. If you want to watch that. That's great. Well, this was mostly about you as a dancer choreographer, so it was wonderful to learn a little bit uh, more about you. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have you back for a full feature while you're here in New York um, and, and discover more about uh, this amazing project that you're putting together this fall. And uh, so we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Thanks for having me.
Back to you, Jenny, for Thank the you, closeout. Heidi. Thank you, Kelly. Exactly. Do you have something on the swimsuit as well? Yes. Uh, oh. Let's just give that a quick plug. <laughs> Fertile Ground in Queens, um, greenspacestudio.org is the website for that, and it's a show with about five different choreographers. I'll be doing a solo called Changing Skin, going back to the snake theme that we had earlier. I've seen that. <laughs> it was wonderful. I saw Thank that you. Saw that it's a structured yeah, improv, it's really cool. so I it'll be interesting that. to see what happens. Yeah, Brilliant. So you can find out more about that and the, all of the fantastic guests this evening on the Salon Facebook page. Uh, you can find out about Roy's dance, which is the 24th to 26th, that's Thursday to next Saturday, and also Autumn's dance on Tuesday the 22nd, uh, the choreography of Muriel Lego. And obviously Theatre Lab is always there with Orietta. So thank you to our wonderful guests, thank you to Orietta Ruoit, thank you to Autumn, thank you to Kelly, and thank you to our special guest presenter, Lani Zipoy. I've been Jenny Green, you can see some of my ramblings on Saturday at 3, and don't forget to check out Sound Lounge. Thank you, and we'll speak to you next week. Have a great week in the arts. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Tim McGraw.